This is a presentation of 18WJTS Jasper Wildcat Football. This broadcast is brought to you by Westside Dairy Queen, Big O Tires, Master Brand Cabinets, Dubois County Tire and Supply, Maringer's Plumbing, Heating and Air Conditioning, Dubois County Garage Doors, Ubalar and Sons, McDonald's, Carpet Warehouse, Sternberg Ford. Now let's go down to the field. Welcome to the Wrights Bowl. Tonight the Jasper Wildcats are on the road for their first SIAC football game down in Evansville, Indiana, taking on the Wrights Panthers. The Wildcats with a 2-0 record after wins over Memorial and Harrison, and they take on Wrights, who have knocked off Harrison and Vincennes and stand at 2-0 as well. Hello, everybody. I'm Craig Schneider along with Bob Welp and Jeremy Marcos on the video. And taking a look at this football game, Bob, you know, the Wildcats, of course, Coming off a big win last week against Harrison, pretty well dominant performance, 50 to seven, and um, actually dominated on the on the ground with 29 carries, 404 yards, and those were split between Blake Mann's 134 yards and two touchdowns. Lance Dawkins had 71 yards on two in two scores as well, and then Isaac Day, 68 yards. He had a nice uh, long run. And uh, also Grant Maringer, one carry for a touchdown, 60 yards. So, you know, it, it pretty well dominated on the ground. But I think tonight to win this football game, you're going to have to see a lot of the same thing. Well, you absolutely are. And, and defense, when you're on the road, you got to feel pretty good about it. When you're talking defense, what everybody remembers is uh, Sheeter taking that ball back against Memorial a couple of games ago. But if you look at it, their offenses are, are relatively the same, 74 for Wrights uh, and 64 points scored this year for Jasper. But on the defensive side of the ball, they've given up 47. Jasper's only given up 10. Right. And they do have a common opponent, which put up quite a few more numbers on Wrights than what they did against Jasper last week uh, at Jasper. Uh, Harrison only putting seven up against the board on, on Jasper. But offensive line, you know, you got Chandler and you got Pope down there. They're the seniors. They got to they lead the offensive line. Jasper comes down here on the road, has a good defense, controls that line of scrimmage. We should be feeling pretty good at the end of the evening. Well, and taking a look at as far as Wright's football games, they're, they've uh, knocked off, like I said, Harrison 52-26, and last week struggled against Vincennes. I mean, that was a game they trailed 13 to nothing after the first quarter, and they scored a couple times in the second quarter to take the lead. Then Vincennes had a, a, a late lead in that football game before Wright's finally won on a, on a uh, touchdown run and won that game 22-21. Now they like to keep the ball in the hands of their quarterback. His name is Reed Bricky. He's a senior this year and uh, he passed for 195 yards against Harrison and rushed for 171 yards and uh, one passing touchdown and three rushing touchdowns. Struggled a little bit last week. He actually had two interceptions, uh, finished with 88 yards passing and a touchdown. He threw to uh, his favorite target and that's uh, Colin Brown who on the season has been their leading receiver, nine receptions for 150 yards and two touchdowns. But Reed, he really likes to run the football as well, as you can see with the numbers there. But uh, last week had a 30-yard touchdown run, so he's a pretty versatile quarterback, just like Blake Mann. Yeah, it's uh, the only main difference is uh, Bricky comes in at 6'3", 215, if you can believe the roster. Right. You know, they, they had me, I was 172 pounds. Uh, my junior year, they had me like 210. So believe the rosters if you want. <laughs> but looking down, watching this young man warm up, uh, he's he's a good sized boy. We're pretty we're pretty high up, and he he looks like he can hold his own. Blake Mann, you know, do they wash each other out? Does Dawkins make the difference? So right. uh, the big thing is Jasper's done really well of uh, giving up some plays, but once they catch the receivers catch it, they've been putting them down, so the yards after the catch are low. So they keep up their fundamentals. They should be fine. All right, and we are underway. Jasper's going to get the football first, and the kick actually goes out of bounds, so the Wildcats will have it at the 35-yard line. And as we mentioned, the Wildcats, again, just a, 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 the offensive line has just been so impressive this year. Aston Sheeter, number 53 in the center spot. The guards are Tyler Kelly and Quade Pope, and the tackles are Carson Chanley, number 79, and Gus Heichelbeck plays left tackle. He's number 64. So, again, I just think really it's going to be whatever team dominates up front, and uh, so far so good for the Wildcats this year with this offensive line. Well, and they're going to find out right off the bat being that Jasper starts with the ball, and Wrights looks pretty stout up front. Looks like they're going with the forefront too, but they like to bring their linebackers, so if we can get past them. Uh, uh, right away. Just a mistake on the offensive line there is number 79, Carson Chanley, the right tackle, jumps offside. So 
Cats will move back five here. And of course, this is a matchup of Tony Lewis with his return to right since he was the head coach here. He coached here from 2008 to 2012. Tremendous success, including a 15-0 season in 2009 winning the state championship. And Corey Brunson comes back to Wrights where he played football here and also coached under Lewis. He was the offensive coordinator during those years. And uh, he comes here after stints at Harrison and at Mount Vernon. So the Wildcats with the rush right up the middle there for about three yards on their first offensive play of the night. Well, it, they're keying on Dawkins. When Dawkins goes through there, their whole, from their defensive tackle to on both sides, their linebackers all collapsed in the middle. If a man, when he does that, if they, they crash again, pulls that back out, runs that little option, we should have some good yards. All right, so second down here for the Wildcats, take, taking on a Wrights team that pretty well, a similar defense, I think, as far as the, what the Wildcats run, and they like to bring their safeties up, though, to, to go against the run here. So Dawkins to the left side with a nice hole, and he picks up about seven yards on that play. So third down and six we'll be looking at. Well, their defensive back, number seven, Burns, came up. He's kind of floating between a defensive back and a linebacker. Uh, evidently, he's the athlete on the defense because they're moving him, quite, quite, you know, moving him from side, uh, end to end. And he was the first one to make contact with Dawkins. And then about two yards later, they finally hit the ground. So I think he got a little worse of that one. So the Wildcats completed just one pass last week and went for a touchdown to Connor Foley. And Cats looking to throw here, but man, he likes to run the football. If he sees an opening, Good nice stiff arm. stiff arm right there at the 39 yard line. And then he sees an opening, still on his feet. Crosses the 40-yard line, so he gets into Wright's territory. An outstanding run, but I think he stepped out of bounds at the 42. But regardless, that's a huge run for the Wildcat quarterback here. Well, the little dip he did with his left foot as he went out took the defensive back and made him kind of stutter step a little bit. And that allowed Mann to get a good angle for a stiff arm. And it was a violent one. Cleaned the defensive back off, and he was able to pick up the first down. A huge first down for Jasper. So... 19 yards on the third and six play there. So first and 10 for the Wildcats just underway here at the Wrights Bowl. Man under center again. Not seen really any shotgun from the Wildcats since they run that triple option offense. And we got a penalty flag on the field. And Oh, and now we got a penalty flag, I think, on the coach. It was That's uh, Tony Lewis who stepped out on the field and was having some words with the official. And it, the penalty was actually against the Wildcats. So that moves it back five. And now we're going to have an unsportsmanlike. And so that's going to tack on another 15, I believe. Well, I, I think Coach Lewis was uh, correct on that. It, it uh, When he moved, the defensive line over there kind of shuddered. So it was actually the defense that pulled. And it was awful close to the snap of the ball. The referees must have an eagle eye down there. Tony Lewis in his second year at Jasper, eight and four. Winning the Big A championship last year in the final year of the Big A conference. And there's Dawkins to the left side. And it so far so good on that left side as he's going to pick up about seven on that run. Well, he, he's just moving the pile. You know, the, the offensive line is doing a really good job of making rights be, you know, two, two yards past that line of scrimmage before they lay a hand on him. And you better hit him straight up because if you try to reach him from the side, he's just going to drag you. Right. So actually, that must have been a sideline warning on Lewis there. So it was still just the five-yard penalty. So now Berger's going to come in low motion, number 21. But Good pitch. Oh, he actually does pitch it out there. So Berger's got the opening, and he's going to get across the 30-yard line. So a nice pick up there, a gain of about 12 on that run. We just discussed the four plays earlier, the way their linebackers and their defense or their cornerbacks were all crashing because Dawkins is such a force inside. And, you know, they've had a couple of nice runs with Dawkins, you know, getting five, six yards. You do that, you're going to get a lot of first downs, so you got to stunt your guys in there. And we had talked about that pitch is going to be there if they crash down, and it worked to perfection. Right. There. So the game plan working for the Wildcats so far as they're moving right down the football field, 9.54 on the clock, and man keeps it this time, and he will get close to the 25-yard line. What I, what I really like about that play is that lets us know as fans the way he f followed Dawkins right up, right past the center, between the center and the guard, I should say. 
you know, we get a third and short or fourth and short, that's a good play to go to. No question. And we'll do our best with the numbers out there. Wright's actually with dark gray numbers on their dark blue uniforms. Really tough to see. And the Wildcats with Vegas gold numbers on their white uniforms. So. Yeah, they got the middle wide open right now. All right. So the, actually no man does keep it this time and he's gonna lose maybe a yard on that play. So good defense of pressure there by the Wrights Panthers and looks like in on the play was number seven, Ty Burns coming up from one of his defensive back spots. Well, that was one where he should have kept it into Dawkins belly right there. It looks to me like the way Wrights is moving, sometimes they'll have a three man front and they'll have more linebackers and they're bouncing them you know, alternate them in between plays, which is really a, a brilliant move. Try to keep the offensive line off guard. But boy, if we guess right, look out. All right, so a third and long, third and eight here from the 27 yard line. Cats converted on third and six earlier and Dawkins gets it. So he kind of drags number one, Jay Smith with him for a few yards there. So he's gonna be short of that first down. This is four down territory, I would say, if you're at the 21 yard line needing a yard or two there. Well, absolutely, especially when, uh, now if we had Kruger, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it, but even though the Jasper kicker is has done very, very well, he's still inexperienced and, and this is quite a shot. So Lewis was definitely thinking uh, two plays for the uh, first down. All right, so the big fourth down situation here, just shy of three yards that the Cats need. And Man, man right keeps it. it. Everybody thought that he gave it to Lewis, and Man hangs up. I'm sorry, to Dawkins, but an outstanding run and a read there by Man, and he takes it in for the touchdown. By far the best read option that he did. I mean, he was in his belly for about a yard and a half. I thought Dawkins had it, especially the way the defense reacted to him. You know, that draws your eyes. And then all of a sudden you see number five pop up, and he keeps doing that. We're going to change his middle name to the. Oh, no so question. So he'll be Blake the man. Right. <laughs> so an outstanding play there by man, and a great read to finish it off. 22 yards out for the score. You know, the offensive line, if you watch them on that, three, four yards down the line, they were still on their blocks. Right. And the kick is right through. So the Wildcats, just like that, move right down the field. 7.44 on the clock at the Wrights Bowl. Cats lead early, 7 to nothing over the Wrights Panthers here on 18 WJTS. Alex Sermersheim is teeing up the football to kick off to the Wrights Panthers. The Wildcats march right down the field. 65-yard drive ended on a 22-yard run on fourth and three by Blake Mann. Sermersheim kicked the extra point, and now Wrights will have their first crack at it. Let's see if they try to keep it away from number seven, Burns. He's right in the middle. Sermersheim, a high kick this time, but it's going to be a little short. Fielded right at about the 17-yard line. Burns is able to get to the 30, so Wrights has got pretty decent field position to start things off. And again, we mentioned their quarterback is Reed Bricky, number two. He is a six foot three, 215 pound senior, and Bob questioned those numbers, but he is a good sized kid as you see him out there, number two, calling the play in the huddle there. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, when Jasper went down and scored, when you look at the, the defense, and, and Jasper only giving up 10 and their defense giving up 47, you figure Jasper was going to put up some points. This is really where I want to see what, what's going to what's going to happen. Are we going to hold true to the 10 points a game? All right, so they run from the shotgun there, and there's a quick run going to Jay Smith. So Jay Smith is able to get across the 35. Actually, they'll spot that at the 38-yard line, so a quick pickup of eight yards on his first run. Well, we got a uh, little bit of height on that defensive line, and their, their linemen are shorter than us, so when we try to stand them up, get a hold of their shoulder pads and find that ball, that allows them to be down in the numbers. They do any leg drive and they're gonna push us back. We gotta stay low. All right, so they're running to the left sides. Smith gets it again there and he's gonna get the first down yardage, pick up a four there on second and two. Well, he was gonna be right at the stick until the Jasper defender kind of fell on top of him pushing about another yard. But, you know, one thing Jasper stayed away from was the big play that put points on the board so far this year. And last year they were plagued with it. So, you know, give me a lot more of the same. 
So Wrights with trips to our near side, and now they're going to throw out of that. That's a hold right Quick there. Quick hitter, and no call on the hold, though. So they're able to get across midfield. They'll spot that. It's going to be close to a first down on that play as he was able to hook up with Malachi Yo Lamachi Joy. I'm sorry. That's like going to the Milwaukee Bucks mm -hmm. and trying Calling to by his last name. <laughs> <laughs> he, he's a number guy at the time. But when that play happened, you heard a lot of people yell hold. But they, they kept that kerchief in. So two first downs for the Panthers so far. Now here's a sweep to the outside if they can stay with them. And the Cats are able to knock him for a loss there. I'm trying to see who actually made the play there. Again, really difficult to see the, the numbers here. It looks like Sheeter was in on the play. So good job there by the linebacker coming up from his spot. Well, doing a nice job of wrapping up too. I mean, he's 5'8", 190. I mean, that's a package. You know, if those numbers hold true, I mean, he will be a load to bring down. And when he plants his foot, he cuts up just as quick as a man does. So when we pursue him, we got to be under control. So a three-yard loss from Knox Wrights back into Wildcat territory at the 49-yard line. Bricky looking to throw. Nice pass and catch out there to about the 40-yard line. So quick, quick hookup, and that's the first time he's able to connect with Colin Brown tonight. We mentioned Brown with nine catches on the year coming into this football game. Well, our defensive backs, we have some speed out there. We, we cannot concede nine yards. You know, we, we're going to be able to. Now, our defensive line is going to have to get some pressure uh, on the quarterback. We, we can't be stunting our linebackers all the time. That opens up the middle too much. But we can't give them too much room on the outside. And on the Cats actually stunt there, and there's opening for the tailback as he's able to get the first down yardage, rushes it all the way to the... 32-yard line, so eight-yard pickup. Well, Blake Mann gave seven to Jasper on his touchdown, and he saved seven right there. So it's, you know, Memorial did this against Jasper. They moved the ball pretty decent between the 20s. Now, now we're going to see if that interior line can tighten up. All right, so now they're going to pitch it out There's here a again. A play they ran earlier with a quick screen out to number 11, Joy, and He's close to a first down again, so Wright's moving right down the football field with a combination of running and throwing the football. Well, their screens are coming to the outside. They run them similar to Memorial, but they got a little bit more, or a little better timing. But if they run those screens on Coach Lewis's side, he may get a penalty this time because they are holding our defensive back on this side every time. So now Bricky's going to keep it straight up, and the Cats... Not able to keep him from getting that first down. He's going to get to the 20-yard line, so three yards on that play when they needed just one. Okay, we're, what are we going to be saying about Jasper's red zone defense by the end of the evening? Here's, here's uh, our first opportunity. Right. All right, so they make the substitution as Pope comes in, so he's in one of the defensive line spots now for the Wildcats. Break it with three wide receivers split. And they give it straight up to Smith, so it's been a combination of Bricky Smith and then also with Bricky throwing the ball around, three completions on this drive so far. Well, Wrights is doing a real good job. When we used to run the 31 trap, we used to bring the guard or the tackle from the backside and pull them all the way across to, to go with the running back, the block. These guys are actually, there's a couple of plays, they took the guard that's on, on that side and just kind of crossed him with the, the tackle on his left side. All right, so Smith gets it to the left side there and maybe gains a yard, maybe a yard and a half as he's able to get just beyond the 15-yard line, so he's just inside there. We'll call it a third and five. Now, Wright has a pretty decent kicker. I've seen him uh, put in about a 30-yarder in the Harrison game, so if Jasper can, can hold them you know, to almost no gain on this, they, they may bring out their kicker. All right, so a third down situation here, 3.55 on the clock. Left corner is going to be open on the end zone. But Bricky looks to his right side, and he's got his man. So he's able to connect right there with number 26, Colin Brown, his second catch on the night. But that's not even going to be enough for a first down, it looks like. So it's going to bring up a fourth down situation here. Fourth and one. All right, so a huge situation here for this Wildcat defense. And... 
course, the crowd situation tonight, both teams were only able to get 250 tickets apiece. 500 people are all they're allowing in the Evansville stadiums down here, but Wrights decides to call a timeout after seeing what the Wildcats are lined up in. So we'll take a break here, and Jasper leads 7-0. When we come back, it'll be fourth and one from the 11-yard line here on 18 WJTS. All right, the Wildcats come back on the field. Wrights is already set there. We're situation here is fourth and one. Wrights on their first drive of the football game. Jasper leads seven to nothing. So fourth and one from the 11-yard line, and Wrights actually lines up an high backfield behind Bricky. And they give it to the tailback. That's Smith. He had a little bit of a delay and was hit in the backfield, but then kind of follows the surge and gets to the five-yard line. So a pickup of... No, about five or six on that run, first well, and ten or first and goal. Yeah, that that was a nice run, but that his first little uh, little movement there, what we, what we would call a second, you know, move, it got him the first down, and then the lineman pushed the pile. But nice job. I mean, they just loaded it up. All right, so goal line defense for the Wildcats here. They're going to keep going with Smith. So Smith, again, similar there, but he was actually able to be slowed up. Maybe gains two on the play. They're going to spot it at the four-yard line, so second and goal from there. Well, they've got the referee behind the five. Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. All right, so the Cats kind of get a break there because the line judge on our near side was actually inside the four when he was really uh, initially setting that. Well, it looked like he got down to the four and then I got pushed so back. Right. So I don't know. All right, so we'll call it no gain. So second and goal from the six this time. One minute, 57 seconds on the clock here in the first quarter. Both teams with good opening drives. Watch for a rollout here. Breaking on, and he's got pressure from behind. If he can get to him, and he's able to throw it out there, and now they got a penalty flag in the end zone. So, But in high school, there's... Yeah, but it could be... A, I think it's going to be a hold over there. Because actually... For the Wildcats over there, that was number 16, Ian Geisler. They are going to call a hold. So it's a defensive hold against the Wildcats. That's a huge break for the Wrights Panthers here. Well, I tell you what, it, it's, you know, following Jasper the way we do and seeing these little screens that they're running out here and not calling hold, and then you call. I mean, I'm not disputing that he didn't hold him, but it was no worse than what they were doing here, and they swallowed their the yellow flag. Well, the thing is, though, it gains them three yards because it's half the distance, but we don't lose. It's not, you know, it's not a first down, automatic first down there, but Smith's able to rush the football to about the two-yard line. Man so a gain a, of one. Man did a great job of coming up because when he got wrapped up, the, the defensive lineman, there were so many of them down there, but when they wrapped him up, he started to spin towards the goal line. Man came up, made contact with him, got underneath him, drove him back to where he couldn't get up close to the goal line. This is a All right, big, so big play. No question. Third down here for the Cats. Like to keep them at the line of scrimmage, if not knock them back a little bit, and then they have to make a decision. But no. Nope. Oh, oh, what a pop right there. And that was man number five coming up from his free safety spot. Oh, my goodness. That was a touchdown saving tackle there, Bob. That was uh, reminiscent of the shoulder he laid into Poor number 11 on the Harrison team where when he stepped out there and Mr. Mann said, okay, we'll make contact, and then his helmet goes six yards down. That was violent. All right, now it's showtime here. Again, only 500 fans here, but they are being vocal right now and a fourth and goal from the one for the Panthers. And, and they try to get it to the fullback straight up, and the Cats just stuff it. What an outstanding defensive play there. Number 58, Jacob Potts was in on that stop. What an outstanding play by the defensive line of the Cats there, Bob. In, in, incredible. I mean, we could sit there and, and we can point out number here, number there, but it's like everybody read the ball perfectly. Man was up there. Of course, he never got to him because of this stellar interior defensive line play. But when he made contact, I mean, there was no doubt. There was no forward progress going to happen. Now, if so, we can punch it in on this, oh, man. Yeah, because the Wildcats are at the three-yard line, so they're able to march 65 yards on their first drive, putting the first score on the board. Jasper leads 7 to nothing, but that's a tough start there as Mann's not able to handle the exchange with the center, and 
We'll lose a yard on that. But well, with man's athletic ability, your first instinct is to pick it up and try to run. But you do try to pick it up in that much traffic. Somebody makes contact with you, the ball's in the end zone, they recover, and then that great defensive stand goes for not. So he did the smart play. He just fell on it. If Jasper does not get a first down, punt the ball and move them back to, you know, 40-45. All right, so both teams were able to move the football, but the Cats are the only ones able to put points on the board. They lead 7 to nothing over the Wrights Panthers here on 18 WJTS. All right, we're back once again here getting start or set to start this second quarter. The Jasper Wildcats with a 7 to nothing lead over the Wrights Panthers after a goal line stand from the one yard line on fourth and goal. Cats are able to stop the Panthers there with a couple big hits both on third down by man and a surge of Wildcats led by Jacob Potts on that fourth down play. Boy, they are just cramming on the inside. Oh man, and so the Wildcats trying to draw rights off there and yeah, but where, line jumps. Yeah, but where, where they're at, yeah, I mean, you're losing half the distance, which is what, a yard? Right. And you, let's get a positive play, you know, give our, if we do have to punt the ball, we want to give our punter some moot, you know, some room. And who knows, maybe one of those rugby style punts will hit the right end and away it goes. Right. All right, so the ball is actually between the one and two yard line. It's like, actually, man's going to keep it this time. Everybody was keying again. I see the defensive line there was really keying in on Dawkins, but man's able to pick up about two, maybe three yards on that run. Well, rule of thumb is you run the ball up the middle, you, you know, safe, just don't turn it over down here. You got to stop, you know, get a decent punt, move them back a little bit. But when you got Blake Mann as that quarterback and, and the coach Lewis is, you know, totally sold on him and says you make the read, you just don't know what's going to happen. No, no doubt. All right, so a big third down situation here if the Cats can convert. Third and nine. Man's going to roll to his left, and the lefty's looking downfield, and now he's actually going to be met right there by Jay Smith. Plays a linebacker position on the defensive side, and so he makes a nice defensive play there and is going to force the Cats to punt. Well, that's, that's one of Coach Lewis's, you know, he's thinking if you roll out, if it's there, throw it deep. If they intercept it, you know, it's as good as a punt. But just don't make the mistake. If it's not there, just eat the ball. We'll punt it away. Let our tremendous defensive unit come back out and see if we can get a stop. So man is the punter for the Wildcats. Doesn't go too deep into the end zone, so he's going to get off a quick one. And it's a low punt that takes a bounce, but it's going to be able to be fielded there by Brown there at the 45. That so Wright's going to have outstanding field position here as he's able to get the ball to the 35-yard line. But we got a late penalty flag over there at the 32-yard line. Well, they've been really going against the white team tonight. Let's hope that uh, the dark blue gets one. So still waiting to see what the call is here. Illegal use of hands against somebody. Yeah, it's going to be against the Panthers here. Which is a big break. Now, when that punt came down, when it bounced up, I mean, it came right to him. So he was re really to be able to plant his foot and take off. Now, they were going to have tremendous field position, which this isn't too bad either. But the way they closed the gap, he'd seen a hole over here. And these, these runners on the punt team, they shut it down in a hurry. Excellent job. So far this year, our specialty teams have been stellar, especially on the coverage side. All right, so first and 10 from the 45. Wright's already in the Wildcat territory here after that punt. Bricky with a quick pass out there, wide open at the 40-yard line. He's got room to run, so he's able to connect with number 19, Isaac Maynard, the junior, and a late flag over there on the sideline as well. Yeah, we're, I think we're going to get a late hit on Jasper right there, but the, the rights, that was just miscommunication over there. I mean, there was just absolutely nobody there. Now, when, when Memorial ran those screens and tried to move their guys and have a crack back blocker and all that, you know, just like in, in basketball, when you get set a pick, just switch. Because all of them are about the same size. Now, man's got some incredible athletic ability, but they all have athletic ability, and they all have some size, so just switch them off. All right, so a 21-yard play on the pass play, and then now with the penalty, 
Puts the football inside the 15 at the 14-yard line. First and 10 for the Wrights Panthers there. So now they're looking to throw to the left side. And again, wide open is Maynard. And he makes a move, and he's able to take it in for the touchdown. Well, so a 14-yard hookup on that pass play. And just like that, Wrights is on the board. Our defensive backs, you know, they're, they're so far back when they do see the read and the ball gets over there. And, and uh, Ricky does a good job of getting the ball out there in a hurry. It, you know, it doesn't float. We get up there. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get the receivers in open spaces. They did right there, one little sidestep, because you got to guess at that point. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, put some points up there. So, so Wrights is doing the job tonight. They move the football down the field with a combination of running and passing the football. But two quick hookups right there, two first catches for number 19, Maynard. They are on the board, and the extra point is popped right through. So... 10.46 on the board here in the second quarter. Jasper 7, Wright 7 here on 18 WJTS. For Wrights, Reed Bricky has completed six passes in this football game. Two quick ones on that last drive. Didn't take long. 21-yard hookup and then a penalty on top of that and then tack on another 14 yards. Both catches by number 19, Isaac Maynard, the junior, 6'4", 185-pounder, so he's a big target for Bricky. Well, it Bricky made the right call as a quarterback. He took what the defense gave him. So uh, Jasper's just got to get the ball back and get a nice drive here. So the Panthers will pop one up there, and Peter's able to field it, number two, and he runs back to the 34-yard line, so the Cats will have decent field position to start here. Well, so far in this game, the first quarter, and just touch into the second quarter here, the one thing that we will say is when it came to kickoffs, uh, field position was always in the favor of the receiving team, and, and no exception now. I mean, Jasper's up there on the just right on the 34-yard line, so it lets you open up a few things if you want to roll out your quarterback. It, it you know, it, you've seen how conservative they were, other than the one by man trying to bounce out of the outside when they're down to the goal line. Now they're in good position. So so far in this football game, the passing game is to Wright's advantage, but this time, man keeps it and. Almost gets ball knocked from him from behind, but he's able to protect it. It was number six coming up from behind. That's Blaze Fox, but man was able to rush that football close to the 50-yard line, just shy at the 49, so a nice pickup of about 18 on that first play. Usually the quarterback follows, well, man following Dawkins through the hole, but he's seen a, a back cut. He actually passed up Dawkins about a yard past the line of scrimmage and got through there, but he's got to understand these Rice players have speed. He carries that ball loose. Somebody's going to get it from behind, and it almost happened there. Actually, we'll call it a 15-yard run there. Now there goes Dawkins, so he's able to bulldoze his way close to a first down and gets into Wright's territory. So just like that, the Wildcat rushing attack continues on. Well, there's two things that, that's happened there. One is with Dawkins, they had him go a little bit further out. You know, usually he's going right up by the by the center or the guards. That one was out a little bit more than the tackle. So they're attacking those because they're taking their linebackers and they're shooting in the middle. They're two defensive tackles. They, they've got six feet there. They are social distancing down there. <laughs> All right, so from the 41, but stuffed right at the line of scrimmage. And that's Dawkins going down, but a nice play by Chris Thacker. One of the defensive linemen, number 21, making a play there. Well, the, the issue that happened there was our pulling lineman from the backside did not clear Dawkins. He's supposed to be, I mean, it, timing is everything. He's supposed to be a half yard to a yard in front of Dawkins so he can kind of follow him in that hole. When they made contact, that made Dawkins stand up a little bit, and then they were able to get into him. So actually Foley, who... A lot of times sets up tight, is split out to our near side here, but they give it to Dawkins on the right side, and he had some running room there and gets across the 35 to the 33. So a seven-yard pickup on that second down play. Well, as you watch this game, when you see Jasper send the guy in motion to the far sideline like they did that play, what they're trying to do is, is get rid of this side over here and drag that defense over on the other side. When he gets on that side, we've got more players over there, so that's our strong side. And then they ran Dawkins to the back side. Right substitutes number 53, Connor Alford, 255-pound defensive lineman there. See the look at their linebackers just come up. Oh, and they spread that. Oh, look but he actually that. stays on his feet. What a second effort, and he continues on. Good job by Dawkins. 
He was pretty well dead meat right at the line of scrimmage, but then was able to break away and picks up about six on that run. You know, the, the compliments that I've thrown that young man's way all year, are they're all kind of equal because that one right there, good Lord, he was dead to rights. Right. And he didn't give up. And, and that's what these youngsters, when they watch this game, they need to see when the coaches talk about leg drive, that's the example that you should be looking at. All right, so quick whistles stop the play here and actually the quarterback man's going to have to come out so coming in is going to be the sophomore Grant Young for a play on this first down situation here. Grant had an outstanding second half late in that Harrison game, scored a touchdown last week. Well when he came in uh, Harrison still had their number one defensive line out there so he did do well but I got a feeling it's going to Dawkins. Oh, and he loses a snap, but is able to hang on to it. But there goes Young, because, again, he's got the running ability. So makes something out of nothing there and gains about a yard. That's something that's that you hate to see, but it's not unexpected. Yep. You know, all of a sudden you got to come out. I'm not so sure the way we were running the ball. Now, Coach Lewis is a, ten times better of a coach than I am. You know, I'm hindsight's 20-20, but I, I may have burned a time out there just to get man back in the game. Right. The Cats have not used a timeout yet. Wrights has used one. We got 7.28 on the clock here. Second quarter, tie football game. Cats second and nine from the 26-yard line. Now Mann keeps it to the left side. Nobody knows he's got it. And he's there's, able, a, oh, and there's got to be a late there hit. We there we go. Penalty flag as he was about five yards out of bounds, and he took that pop, and Mann rushes. To the 10 yard lines, we're going to spot that. So it was a huge play there. Now, usually First town for the Cats. It, it's good that man's a senior. I mean, it, usually when you when you have a late hit, I mean, you're that far out of bounds and get popped. It's easy to lose your head. But unfortunately for Wrights, the one thing that does do is that take Blake Mann and that moves him to a different level. You know, like Coach Rolletter used to say, get him back, but get him back the legal way. Right. All right, so give him 15 yards on the run. And then half the distance goes to the five-yard line. So the Cats moving right along on their third drive tonight. So first and goal from the five here, 7-13 on the clock. Cats looking to break this tie. We're tied right now at 7-7. Looks like Wrights is, now they're going to take their, their forefront, but they're going to move somebody a little bit closer in here to the center, trying to take away that middle, and they'll stun the linebacker up that hole. And here he comes. So man's going to keep it. He's touchdown. got room, and he will easily walk right into the end zone for the touchdown. So man and Dawkins dominate that drive there all on the run. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plays. Finishes with the five-yard touchdown run, and Jasper gets the lead back, 13-7. Well, we talk about guessing when, you know, when you're getting in these short, short situations, especially when you've got a dual threat like Jasper's got back there. And they sold out on Dawkins. Man seen it just kind of, there was no question. All right, so Sermersheim comes out to pop the extra point. And he puts it right through. So the Jasper Wildcats answer the right touchdown to tie this football game. Now they lead 14 to 7 with 7.09 to go here in the second quarter. You're watching the Wildcats here on 18 WJTS. So a nice drive by the Wildcats. Started at their own 34-yard line, so both their drives, one went, started from the 35, that last one from the 34, 14 to seven. They lead the Wrights Panthers here, so. Well, it, they, they've got to do a good job of covering. We cannot give them an easy one after working so hard. So a nice kick this time by Sermersheim. Takes them inside the five, tough time handling the football. And oh boy, he could have broke that. Oh, and now he slams the ball on the turf, and there it goes. He was there gone. There it goes. Yeah, no doubt about it. That was number 31, Noah Howard, if I'm seeing it right. I'm trying to now take that back. It's 34, Jonas Burnett, and I think he knew he had a wide open path there up the middle of the field, but got tripped up, and you know that's just a frustration there by the sophomore, five foot seven, 155. Well, he'll, he'll learn from that. Right, and the you coach know, is talking to him down there. Yeah, and, and we've seen what uh, Brunson did with Malvernon. I mean, Gaffer, you know, had their way with them, but 
let's face it, in, in the Big Eight, you're you're always talking Vincennes Jasper. Right. But Brunson had them winning games that they normally didn't do. So it's no shock that that he's down there doing the coaching and getting guys to buy into his program. Ten right. yards off. So Wrights will have the football at the nine-yard line, so that really pushes them back. And the Wildcats, after that goal line stand, had a little tough time whenever they were started that drive at the three-yard line. So we'll see how Wrights does with tougher field position here. Well, when Wrights runs the ball up the middle, when you're watching this game, the one thing you want to see is if there's somebody in the same color with a very, very high number, usually in the 70s or high 60s. If, if, he's, if that particular person is standing next to the running back, our defensive line is getting some great push up front. All right, so Bricky's got four wide receivers split out there, and the Cats only have two guys picking up. Well, our safety trips supposed to over take here. the middle. Now he's going to throw it long, and that's actually a push by number 26, Colin Brown. He pushed right in the back of Albrand, number four, but the pass goes too long here and falls incomplete. Well, I think if they'd have came to Allbrand's receiver, uh, flag may have came out. Of course, they did miss those two obvious holdings. But Allbrand, for people coming up that, that play that position in Pop Warner or whatever, watch that. That was beautiful. He got in front of him, and he just kind of slowed himself down to where if there was contact, it was initiated by the offense. Right. So, I mean, beautiful play on there. But, you know, Ricky, can, it, he's just proven there. He can put the ball down the field. So we got to stay vigilant. So Jack Albrand, the junior, he's picking up one-on-one -on -one against number 19, Isaac Maynard here. But now Bricky's going to roll to his left this time, and he's got Maynard, so he's able to get some space there. And nice comeback route and catches it on the sidelines and gets that huge first down for the Wrights Panthers. Gives them breathing room as well as they're getting a to the 25-yard, uh, 24-yard line. Well, Grant Maringer's a senior. He, he's got to know where that first down marker is, and he can't give anything up right there. And, and he was three yards past it, and he stopped and caught it at it, turned his body, and there it is. So about a 16-yard pass play there, and now a quick hitter to Look at the that right hold. side. There it is. And here comes it. penalty flags all over the place as number 11, Joy, gets open running space, and he's going to go for the touchdown, but I think this is coming back as you can see the offensive linemen back here. They're pointing to the flag, but nobody's celebrating yeah. <laughs> on the right sideline. Well, that run doesn't happen if that hold doesn't take place. Right. Because Jasper had it shut down. I just cannot believe. So a 76-yard pass play is going to come back on a hold. Well, the one thing that drives a coach crazy, well, that penalty in particular, but Usually when the, when the receiver or the running back or whatever is five, six yards down the field and it happens behind it. But like we had just said, it was that hold that, that opened that up. All right, so that's going to move the football back 10 yards from that spot. And you know what's really funny about that? When we talked about the two holding penalties that didn't, we had mentioned that if it happened on Coach Lewis's side, and that's where it happened over on the Jasper, you know, towards their sideline. Yeah. All right, so now we're looking at first and 19. Bring Push back up. to the 15-yard line. Now Bricky's going to throw out here, and he's got Colin, and now he cuts across field, and nice defensive play there. So he tried to make something out of it, but uh, trying to see who made the stop there. I think it was number 24, Michael Beekler, coming from his defensive end spot to make that tackle. One thing I'm noticing that the Evansville Wrights receivers are doing is they're coming out, and when they're doing those button hooks, they've got us running the opposite way, and, of course, him stopping, he's going to be able to do it for us, but he gets a little hitch, you know, like he's really planting himself, and, and if Jasper can read that, we could go the other way. So Bricky now facing some pressure here and slings it out there and completes it again. So Bricky having a night throwing that football around the field. This time he hooks up to Alex Clark. So we're starting to see a little variety as far as who he's throwing the football to tonight. And that one's a big hookup for a first down. Well, being that he's 6'3", and he is a tall kid, whatever his actual height is, he can see the field pretty good. It's very evident the way he's moving the ball around the field. But Jasper get, Jasper's starting to get a little bit more pressure, a little bit more pressure. I hope they don't sell out and bring both the linebackers because if they do that, that play could have really been in uh, Wrights' favor. 
So 15 yard hook up on that play. First and 10 now from the 39 yard line. Now they're setting up a screen to Colin Brown, but the Cats read it well. And don't think that play went for anything there. Well, the, finally on our on our, our side, that our, def, our defensive back kind of looked over and kind of seen him leaning towards him. So he knew that crack back was coming and did an excellent job that time of tying him up. And when the receiver caught it and went back in the middle, he had to bowl back towards the line of scrimmage, which gave Jasper with their speed enough time to come up and drop him. So outstanding coverage there by the Wildcats to stop that play. Second and 10 from the 39. And now Wright's Corey Brunson didn't like what he saw there, so he's going to call a timeout. So we got four minutes and 13 seconds on the clock. Jasper leads 14 to 7 over the Wrights Panthers here on 18 WJTS. Well, Reed Bricky, the quarterback for the Wrights Panthers, was 9 of 21 passing against Harrison in week one. Last week he struggled a little bit, only 88 yards passing and two interceptions. But tonight he looks like an all pro in this drive alone four or five passing, and he's just picking the Wildcat defense apart right now. Bricky again connects. And Cat's not able to make the stop there. So additional yardage picked up by number 21. I'm sorry, 26, Colin Brown. So he has another big play. Well, when our defenders came over, we tried to strip the ball instead of getting under him. You know, if these guys catch the ball and we lay some shots on them like, like man has, you know, they're going to start to hear our footsteps come across the middle, but he's setting up, and this timing that he has with his receivers right now, he's on fire. So 20 yards on that play, first and 10 for Wrights, and again, a wide open receiver on the outside, and we've been seeing that all night with Isaac Maynard just finding that space over there. And the junior with another pickup there, gain of 12 and a first and 10 again for Wrights. Well, the ball's in the air before, you know, as the guy's making his cut. He caught the ball at... If you're thinking, you know, it's first down and 10, seven yards into that 10 yards, our defensive back was at the 12 yard. You know, he was too, that's gonna, that's gonna kill us all night long if we do not adjust. So their first drive, they're able to move down to the one yard line. Cats with a goal line stop there. And this time, good job defensively getting into the face of the quarterback and trying to see if that was, uh, I think it was number was that 58 pots making that play? It, it seemed to be. The one thing I've noticed is when he's doing really well on his uh, on his throws out here, now our defensive backs are, are, are back, but he's planting his foot and driving the ball. But when he's running off to the side or he's got to do any movement at all with, it, with his feet, it doesn't seem to, that he's having the success as he is the other way. Look at this pressure. All right, now they're coming hard, and Bricky's able to get it out there, and he's got a man just waiting for the football to come down, and he hauls it in for the touchdown. So he connects with Joy, number 11, on a pass play there. Well, a great job by the, the Wrights coaching staff there. They rolled him to this side, and we brought the pressure. We talk about guests, and they guessed right. But what, what I find hard to believe is... Now I am up here, I'm not down on the field, but that ball seemed to be in the air forever. And when he caught it, we were still four yards away from it. Well, it looks like the pressure was coming from that backside, but he was able to just loft it right there into the hands. The Cats weren't able to recover there, and Joy hauls it in for the 30-yard touchdown, and the extra point is good. So we got a shootout in this football game. The Wildcats on the ground, and the Wrights Panthers through the air. It's 14-14 tie here on 18 WJTS. So Reed Bricky is having an outstanding football game for this Wrights Panther offense. A senior seven of nine passing on that drive. All their, all their yardage basically came through the air. Had him down for 92 yards passing, including that 30 yard touchdown pass. Well, a couple of my pals down in this area, a couple of them actually went to Wrights. Uh, we discussed that it may come down to quarterback play. And the quarterback play's been outstanding from both sides. Of course, the Wildcats doing it on the ground with Blake Mann, number five, and that kickoff goes out of bounds, so the Cats will have it from the 35. So Cats with three possessions tonight, two of them finished with touchdowns. The Wrights Panthers, same thing. They've had three possessions. We're actually stopped at the goal line on their first one, but then 
He only took two plays from 45 yards out to tie the football game 7-7. to Man had a five-yard touchdown run to give the Wildcats a 14-7 lead, and then we just saw the 30-yard touchdown pass that ties this football game up 14-14. Now the Cats turn right now with 3.15 to go here in the first half. Man's going to have to dance around there at the line of scrimmage. And I think the ball actually hit the turf there as everybody was going after it. But Man's able to recover and gains maybe a yard on that play. Well, Wrights right now is totally selling out on the, on the, uh, on the run. They are taking Dawkins and they're going after, after Man. <clears throat> Pardon me. Watch out for Foley. I mean... The inside is really opening up. All right, so second down, and we'll call it 10. Well, they give it to the full back there, and he's able to jump over the 40-yard line and close to the 45. We'll see where they spot this football. It looks like it's going to be actually right there at the 43-yard line, so a third and short, third and two here for the Cats. Now, did Wright use two timeouts? Yes. Okay, that explains why they didn't call one there. But yes. if Jasper does not make it here, you can bet your bottom dollar it will be coming out. So third and two. The Cats have been able to convert their third downs tonight. Oh, and what a pop, and man hangs on to it. And now he's going to pitch it out to the outside. I believe that's Day with the football, and he's got some room and actually runs out of bounds there. But, boy, what a pop was put on Dawkins. But man held on to the football. Another outstanding read by the quarterback and then eventually pitches it out. Man gets out there so fast, and, and when him and Day are um, running that little option play right there, their, their timing seems, now they've played football together for a year and a day, you know, but their timing really seems to be on the mark, which is so key when you run the option. So the Cats right at midfield now. First and 10 from the 50. Clock is stopped as Day was able to run out of bounds there. Now they give it to Dawkins. Look at the space. He's getting wide open in the middle of the field. If he can continue, and he's actually just tripped up inside the 20-yard line. So Dawkins with a quick hitter, and he's able to rush into the red zone there as they'll spot that football at the 17-yard line. So a pickup of 33 on that play. What a great play call by, by the coaching staff, whether it's Coach Lewis or whoever whispered it in his ear. But earlier in the game, they ran the same exact play on a third and seven. Dawkins did the same thing, cut to the backside, and away he went. I, th I thought he was actually going to pull away from those guys. So first and 10 from the 17, 127 on the clock. Cats moving again. They give it to Dawkins this time on a more of a counter play to the right side, but Wrights is able to stop that. Good play defensively, including... Leland head number 77. Do you have Jasper down with three timeouts? Yes, they got three timeouts. You mean all I have to do is look on the board down there and yeah. see the three timeouts? There you go. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks for show, sharing that information. I'm old. My eyesight's not real good. I don't pick that stuff up so easy anymore. Well, we're inside of a minute right now. No gain on that play, so second down and 10. Man's going to keep it. He's got the option going. Now he lowers his head, and he's going to get the first down yardage. And again, we got the timeouts, but that's going to stop the clock briefly with 44 seconds as they'll move the chain. So an 11-yard run there for Man. Well, you and I were talking earlier whenever we went to our commercial breaks how important it was for Jasper to have the lead going into this half because Wrights gets the ball start of the second half. So if we can punch it in, they've only got one timeout anyway. You know, we cover our lanes on the kickoff. That should take us to half. Right. All right, so actually the clock's going to run here, 30 seconds. Cats did not call a timeout. Now they will, I believe. Unless Wright's called the timeout. Well, did the clocks, did Jasper call timeout? No. The clock shouldn't have started. Well, it starts once they set the ball because they got the first down. So ball's at the six-yard line, so... Right now, 29 seconds, that clock running again. First and goal for the Cats here. Man's going to keep it, and he will take it in for the touchdown. So you're talking about a battle of the quarterbacks. Wildcats all over the ground here with Blake Mann. But big run there by Lance Dawkins, a 33-yarder to help set up that touchdown. 
So the Wildcats get another score with 22 seconds to go, and right now leading by six, 20 to 14. Well, I tell you what, the uh, news stations around this area are going to be running their sports really long because there is a tremendous amount of highlights in this, in this game. So far, so good. So again, the first conference matchup of these two teams. They've always met in the tournament, postseason tournament. And a good job by Sermersheim, who stays perfect on the season as he pops that through. So Jasper, 21, writes 14 when we come back. Just 22 ticks before halftime here on 18 WJTS. So the Wildcats doing it all on the run there. Another 65-yard drive. They've had a 65, 64, and 65-yard scoring drives in this football game. Lead 21 to 14, 22 seconds to go. Are we going to... And they just booted straight out of bounds. So that's actually a huge break for Wrights. Well, you, you would think, but then on the other hand, is the coaching staff looking at it and saying they have one timeout. It's going to be on the 35. So they're going to have to go 65 yards. Yeah. You know, even if we give up the 10 yards, as long as they don't get those yards after the catch, you know, break the big one, they're not, they're, they won't be able to do anything. So. If Wrights throws the ball, I would really anticipate, especially if they use their last time out, every pass is going to be past the, uh, the yardsticks down there because you either have to have it incomplete to stop the clock or you got to get the first down. All right, so Rice has 22 seconds on the clock. Nothing ticked off on that ball, kicked out of bounds there. They're going to set up a screen. And yeah. good job to keep him in bounds. So... I think Having a night tonight is actually Jacob Potts, number 58, so that's going to keep the clock running. We're at nine seconds now. So the pass out there to number 11, Joy. Just play deep. Watch deep. Now Bricky. He's just going to chuck it out there, and it's just open space, and that ball will fall in complete, and that will be the end of the quarter. So... First half of play is over. Jasper with a 21 to 14 lead. And uh, really it's two tales of two styles of football tonight for the most part. The Wildcats doing it all on the ground tonight. Combination of Lance Dawkins and Blake Mann. And uh, they put three scores on the board. Wrights is just chucking the football all over the yard. So their passing play or passing game has been on tonight. And that is led by Reed Bricky, their quarterback. They actually had some nice runs. They gave the ball a lot to Jay Smith on their first drive. Then the Wildcats were able to stop at the goal line for a goal line stand there. But since then, Wrights has just been throwing it all over the place, Bob. Well, it, the thing with, with our defensive backs, and, and we have alluded to it in the first half, they're, they're going to have to tighten up or we're going to have more of that in the second half. The way this game is going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, it kind of gives you the idea that this is it's either going to be the team with the ball at the end or is there going to be a silly mistake. I mean, that's kind of the two ways I, I look at it. I was so impressed with Jasper offense. I thought their defensive line did pretty decent. They got some pressure on him. But he's so hard to get to because, like the pros used to say about Dan Marino, I mean, the ball's gone. Right. He plants that foot and the ball's out, and that's when the guy makes his break. Their timing is incredible. So even if we have tight coverage on him, you know, he's putting the ball where it needs to be. So like you said, that we're doing it through the run game with Mann and, and Dawkins, and they're doing it through the air. So at the end of the night, we'll figure out which one's better. No question. All right, so we're going to take a halftime break here. Jasper leads the Wrights Panthers here at the Wrights Bowl, 21 to 14 here on 18 WJTS. We're in halftime here at the Wrights Bowl. The Jasper Wildcats with a 21 to 14 lead over the Wrights Panthers in this SIAC matchup between two former colleagues, coach and pupil and uh, all that. So Corey Brunson, the coach of the Evansville Wrights Panthers against Tony Lewis, but the game is on the field and really two styles of football that we're seeing here tonight with the Wrights Panthers doing it through the air and the Wildcats doing it on the ground. So taking a look at the numbers and Bob, you just kind of look at it, and, um, you know, it's it's pretty even when you say, you know, Wright's 30 plays for 201 yards, Jasper 27 plays for 204 yards. So, you know, again, that's just in a half of football. But Wright's mostly coming through the air with 172 yards passing 
by Reed Bricky, who's 14 of 17 and two touchdown passes. And he's really spreading it out when you take a look at as far as the receiving numbers. Colin Brown with five catches. Isaac Maynard with four. And Malachi Joy, number number 11, with four catches. So, you know, again, he's able to really kind of spread things out there against this Wildcat defense tonight. Well, the one thing that that tells you when he hits so many receivers is he has time to read the field. Now, I will say this in his defense. He's experienced. He can throw the ball. We've seen him throw against his body, rolling to the left. We've seen him, you know, throw to the right. His, he's just in his mindset. He sees how the defensive backs are set. So if we don't get pressure on it, he can go through his readings. And then that's when you share the ball. And as a defense, you got to get pressure, and you cannot let that be an option because that will eat you alive all night. Yeah, and Wright's actually in their first drive there with a number of runs. That was Jay Smith with the 11 carries for 31, I'm sorry, 25 yards. He had a six, six yards and losses there. But, uh, again, it's been through the air so far for the Wright's Panthers. Now looking at the Wildcats, Blake Mann having a night, 13 carries for 99 net yards and three touchdowns on the ground tonight, but also Lance Dawkins with some big runs, 11 carries for 86 yards. So talk about the Wildcat rushing game. Well, Mann is doing another nice job of, you know, the read option. There's right. been a couple of times where he's actually went, you know, to the side of Dawkins instead of following him because he's seen something opened up. So his eyes are, are doing a great job tonight of finding where the openings are. You know, Lance Dawkins is just being the man. He's going through. People are hitting him. He knows he's going to get hit, tries to fight through him, and like he did when he popped that one up the middle, he was just oh so close to taking it to the house. You know, you can't key on either one of them. And then when Day comes in and they run that option, Foley on the tight end job is doing such a good job of coming down the defensive line and pushing the defensive end in. When it gets out there, the – player, the defensive player for rights, he's got to pick the two. And man does a nice job of making that defender come to him. He pitches it out. Day gets eight, nine yards. Man. Right. You know, and if you go the other way, you, we've seen what, what man can do. You know, he plants that foot and like a lightning bolt, he's gone. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, when you run the triple option, you basically have three options. It's either giving it to the fullback and that's a read right there to whether you're going to, you know, let him continue on with the with the play if it's a wide open hole. But then man can either pull it back hang on to it himself, and then just follow, really, that fullback through the line. And, you know, obviously he's got the ability to break outside and make big plays out of that. And then, of course, also, you know, just, just running out as far as the option, the, the traditional option of just, you know, pitching to the tailback if, if the uh, defensive end or, or cornerback comes up and picks up the quarterback here. Well, it, the, the one thing about it is when man has the ball in his hands at, so far in the first half, as a defense, you are guessing. You have no clue. He is doing such an awesome job of getting that ball into Dawkins, pulling it out. Now, we see it on TV on how great it looks, and, you know, we see him flying down the field. Now, imagine doing that when you got 225-pound guys crashing down on you, and at the snap of a finger, you have to make the right call. And so far, the Jaspers got hit two or three times where he's left it with Dawkins or he's kept it, that, that they got stopped. But for the most part, he's made the right reads. And it is impossible to stop that if your quarterback is on fire, just like Jasper is having an impossible task against the Wrights passing attack because their quarterback's on fire through the air. All right, so the Wrights Panthers are going to get an opportunity to start the second half to answer that last score by the Wildcats. Blake Mann ran from six yards out with 22 seconds to go in the first half to give the Wildcats this 21 to 14 lead. So Mann with three touchdown. Three touchdowns rushing, and quarterback Reed Bricky for the Memorial Tigers with two touchdowns passing. So the quarterback battle continues tonight, and Cats will be kicking off to the Panthers to start the second half. And it will be fielding again, a tough time fielding it right there at the eight-yard line. But again, he had an opening, and this time it looks like he's going to break it. And he gets away, and this could be a return if he can get past the kicker right there. And he is finally stumbled. But what an outstanding run. We saw it come back by Jonas Burnett earlier, or actually got tripped up on, a, on an opening it looked like. 
but Jonas Burnett, the sophomore, impressive on that kickoff return all the way to the 21-yard line. Well, when, you, when you're quote-unquote a seasoned vet on how much football you have consumed over your lifetime, you know, we're sitting up there, and we see when, when so many times at every level, when they bobble that ball, the cover guys, their eyes get real big, and then you forget your assignments and things like that happen. So a 20 or a 60 yard kickoff return and they're trying to run the football straight up. So it's the first carry we've seen in a while by Jay Sh Smith, the junior running back with his 12th carry of the ball game tonight. Well, in, in several times, we've seen the stop when Jasper had their goal line stand there at the beginning, they never gave up on the play. Even if he got down to the three yard line, you know, they were not conceding that end zone. They could have pulled up, they didn't. Now, if Jasper's defense can come up and push play very solid in the interior, get some pressure on him because you know he's going to put the ball in the air sooner or later. And we, we hold him here. You know, it, it just changes everything. All right, so Bricky with Smith in the backfield with him. Looking to his left side. A hold. He's going to have to run downfield, and he lofts it out there, and he's got a man if he can make the play, and Katz actually pick it off in the end zone. What a play there. I couldn't see the number. For the Wildcats that knocked it off, but I think that was Mann who picked it off, number five. But, yeah, the defensive play over there by the defensive back, again, it's kind of hard to see the Wildcats' gold numbers, especially that far away in the end zone. But what a defensive play by the Cats, and Mann finishes the tip drill there with the interception, and the Cats with a big turnover there. I know the audience is not going to believe this, Craig, but I, I swear to them, at halftime when we were off the air, we said this could come down to a turnover. And if Jasper can go get points, we even said that. If they can score here, get a turnover, get a score, you know, this plays right into their hands. So let's see what they can do. So the Cats come up with the first turnover of the night, and they give it to Dawkins right away. And he earns every yard of that three-yard run there on first down. You know, on that interception, one thing that man did really well, Jasper had their defense there. And one thing that man did when, when the ball came down to the receiver, it, it was kind of a live, you know, hot potato type deal. And man with his quick hands just kind of reached in there and, and you know, no, this ball's mine. He's, he's, his attitude in the defensive backfield is the same attitude as a quarterback. Right. All right, so the Wildcats with the second down, six yards they need for a first down to get to the 30 yard line, ball at the 24 yard line. This time they give it to the fullback, and the fullback lumbers again. Look at him go straight up, and he gets across the 35, and first down yardage for the Wildcat fullback. Jasper's doing the same thing that they did when they started this. I, I don't know the coaching staff well enough or, or talk to them enough to see if they're, they're scripted coming out of, the, you know, starting the game or coming out of halftime but they're giving the ball to Dawkins, and now they want to see those linebackers start to cheat in the middle again and then pop man to the outside. So the Cats trying to take advantage of getting the football back after a 60-yard kickoff return for the Wrights Panthers, and Dawkins gets it again, but a nice defensive stop there. Trying to see the number. I think that's number 47, Mason Mossberger. You are correct. But he did a nice job of being able to get in front of Dawkins and get wrapped around his waist. Instead of the way they've been doing most of the nights, hitting him on the side, Dawkins just too strong for that. Actually, after a closer look, it looks like it was Gabe Ryder, number 43. But regardless, he's able to keep Jasper to just a two-yard gain on that play. So second and eight. So now we run a counter to the outside there, but it was read very well by the linebackers coming up for rights, including number 29, Maximus Bell. When we talked about the rights, the sophomore getting through, he got the penalty, of course, but almost getting through, we were that close. That, when he came in, the defensive back, if he would have just, if his foot, when he planted it, would have slipped just a quarter of an inch, we were talking big yards, but a nice job of getting under control. So Berger on that run only gains a yard. So now the Cats right at the 40-yard line need to get about seven yards for a first down here on third down. Man, it looks like he's got the yardage. He's going to get across midfield and gets to the 45 and rushes it 
out of bounds there. They'll spot it at the 43-yard line, so a big run by the quarterback here. You know, when, when you talk about Jasper and Wrights, you, you go all the way back, of course, to Kruger, and you go back even further to that when Tony Aarons had his boys playing and all that. But back when in Austin, I believe, is the older one, they, Wrights had McIntosh. And that's exactly, he looked exactly like man right now. I mean, he, his reads, his explosiveness out on the corner is incredible. So the Cats with the football, first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Right side, Dawkins, he's not going down. He is not going down. He continues across the 30 to the 25-yard line. So Dawkins hit every single part of that run and then drags the defender all the way to the 25, so a huge pick up there. You know, that is a whole bunch of want-to right there. He was just, you cannot hit Dawkins. And I know it's easier said than done because we're up here and we're looking down and they're playing at game speed down there. But it's just bad news for the defense if you hit him from the side. All right, so first and 10 for the Wildcats at the 25-yard line. 7.35 to go here. Cats trying to put points on the Good board. Lead. And there goes Mann straight up. It looked like he wanted to give that football up, but I think Dawkins kind of hit a different hole than where Mann expected him to be. But regardless, Mann takes it 10 yards for another first down. Well, he was in his motion to go there, and you're exactly right. Dawkins seen the hole open up on, on the outside, but it closed so quickly because the linebacker in the middle shot because Dawkins has been killing him. And man, immediately, the way he plants his foot and he takes off, man, that is impressive. All right, so the rushing game just continues. Wrights cannot stop the Wildcats on the ground here. Now man's going to run the option, and he chooses to keep it off tackle there and maybe gains three on the play. He had Day on the option. Well, Dave bow bowed out like he was supposed to, and man, maybe he had it in his mind he was going around the end anyway, but it's a good thing that he did keep the ball. You know, it's not a long run like he's had several times tonight, but the, as deep as he was, if he'd have tried to pitch that out, that could have been some major issues. But once again, he's making the right move. All right, so second down. Ball's at the 12-yard line, second and seven. Man's got day this time, but he keeps it. And he makes the spin, gets inside the 10. So pick up of about three on that play. What, what I would like for the people that watch this broadcast, when man goes to the outside and he has day, you are correct that the pitch was there, but he waits so long, that defensive end that comes up and then they roll the linebackers out, he makes them make their step. Are they going towards day or are they going towards him? Right. And it, that's awful hard to do at breakneck speed. But so far, they're pulling it off. So now the Cats facing inside the red zone, a third and five here. And man, now at the last second, pitches it to the outside, and that's Berger with the football. And we got a penalty flag, though, that flies. So we'll see what this call is. Berger got real close to that first down yardage. I think they were going to spot it right there at the 10. That would be a first down. Well, one of the Wildcats was grabbing his face mask like the defender grabbed his face mask. Nope. And that's going to be a hold against the Wildcats. So first down yardage, forget it. So the Wildcats going to be pushed back about 10 yards here, and that was actually from the spot. So it's going to still be third down for the Cats, but third and... Well, they spot it right there at the 11, I'm sorry, the 16-yard uh, line. So it's going to be third and about 11 here. Well, it, Jasper's done so good in the running game, but I just want, I kind of wonder, you're going to be able to tell, if, if they put it up in the air here and they get close, they'll go for it on fourth. But if not, they may bring Sermersign in. All right, so man's going to throw. He's got a man wide open if he can get it to him, but he goes towards the end zone. Ball gets popped up, and it falls incomplete. He had a man out in the flat wide open, but he went towards the end zone. I think it was Albrand maybe he was going towards, yes. But the ball got popped up, and Connor Foley was over there to try to clean it up and catch that ball, but the ball falls down, and so Jasper now on fourth down from the right hash is going to try a field goal here, so... Well, the, the one thing, when you're absolutely right. He went to the wrong receiver, but he did have some pressure. 
And, and when he did release the ball, it was there, but the defensive back for Wrights made a great job of closing out. All right, so the Cats late getting a player in. Two players, they're going to have to call a timeout here. Yeah, you have to. Oh, boy. So the Wildcats not having their beef team ready to get out there to kick that field goal, or at least attempt the field goal, has to take a timeout. So we'll take a break. 5.32 to go here in the third. When we come back, the Cats will be attempting a field goal. They lead 21 to 14 here on 18 WJTS. All right, so number 12, Alex Sermersheim comes back onto the field after the timeout. McGimsey will hold here, and they're going to actually spot it right there at about the 23, right on the 23-yard line. So this will be a 33-yard field goal attempt. This, this, is a, this is a big play in the game. He's definitely got the leg. So here's the snap. And he does not get a very good boot onto the football and shanks it hard to the left side. So the first field goal attempt there by Sermersheim comes up short. So Jasper, who intercepted a bricky pass, Blake Mann picking it off in the end zone, and they march all the way. They got to the 10-yard line, then a penalty knocked them back to the 20. So now Marites will have the football first and 10 from the 20-yard line. Well, even though that was the result, you can look at the silver lining in the cloud. The offense was out there quite a bit. So that defensive line, you know, should have some rest on them. All right, so the Panthers first and 10 from the 20. They're going to try to run the football, and a good job by the Cats to stop that quickly. Met by a number of Wildcats out there, including Sheeter and also number 63 making a play, and that's Liam Kibbe. Yeah, they, they brought it from the backside, and, and they went away from Smith. They used a different running back, and I tried to catch his number, but it's kind of difficult with some of the glare that we've got going on down there. But nonetheless, when they got the ball and they came to the backside, Jasper did a great job of holding their line of scrimmage, holding their area, and, and they dropped him. So Ty Burns is in the backfield with Bricky. Now again, that play that's been working to Maynard picks up about seven there. Well, the one thing though is, yeah, it has been working, but no yards after the catch. And, and you know, especially in a tight game like this, there is no fourth down and go for it unless you're fourth and in inches, of course. But so they've been running these little screen passes that's been effective. Now, I wouldn't be surprised to see them try to run a screen pass to the strong side of the field here and take the other receiver and run him deep and try to clean out the area. All right, so the Panthers now facing a third down situation here, third and three. Brought some heat. Breaking the heat's coming up from the middle, and he will go down. So the Cats come up with a big sack there. Good defensive play. It looks like Dawkins was in on it. But also, Sheeter is always real active on that pass rush. Well, it's one thing we've always said about when you're blitzing your linebackers, you know, you better get him. Uh, and, and they did a great job of collapsing that pocket that they have around. And if people don't know what the pocket is, imagine looking down from the top, it's a horseshoe. And they were able to push those guys in, push, and when he ran, he had nowhere to go. Great job by the defense. Ooh, quick snap to the quarterback. So Bricky is their punter there on that play at least, and the ball's going to roll. No return for the Cats, and it will go inside the 20 and rest right at about the 19-yard line. But the Wildcat defense, you know, again at halftime, both these teams were going to have to make adjustments, obviously rights against the run, but Jasper moved the football right down and got deep into the uh, rights territory down to the 10-yard line there. Cats going to have to make some plays against the pass. So far, an interception and a big sack there. Well, they brought their defensive backs up. And, and they've done a nice job of no yards after the catch. But as far as that, that last offensive drive by Jasper, you and I had talked about in the Harrison game, they had a bad penalty, but the game was so far out, it wasn't a bad, bad penalty. That was a killer right there. All right, so Wright's two possessions so far in the second half, no scores. Jasper on their second possession here. And the running game with Dawkins on the right side and he's able to pick up five on that first down play. If I'm, if I'm coaching rights and I'm talking to my defensive linemen and my linebackers, I, I've got my, my hands crossed like I'm praying, pleading with them to get into his legs. He is just way too strong above the waist. Right. you got to try to be able to trip him up. Because even on the hits that they did have on him to where he didn't get any gain, they took him down, but nobody's really plowed him. 
Cats actually change a quarterback. It's Young out there under center. So Young's going to keep it, but not much there. Read very well there by number 21, Chris Thacker. It would be interesting to see if Mann's got maybe uh, some equipment problems. Yeah, I'm looking over on the sideline. It's so, so far on this drive, Grant Young, sophomore quarterback, number seven out there running the play. And the Cats in a short yarded situation here. Boy, well, we talk about being, you better be ready for your opportunity. If I'm right, I'm selling out on Dawkins. So they try to draw him off sides, but Young keeps it. And we'll see if he got the first down yardage. It's going to be real close, depending on which spot they go by. And I think he's going to be short. So they try to draw him off sides there on the longer count, but then Young just camping on a sneak. Well, and then that begs the question, if we punt the ball, man's our punter, right? Exactly. Well, Tony Lewis is going to go for it here on fourth and short. Hey, big I would game. think Lance Dawkins is your main option on this play. Yeah, big game, big decisions, you know. That's head coach is, is they're going to pat him on the back or they're going to let him have it. And the Wrights Panthers, though. Corey Brunson and his defensive staff over here did not like what was coming up, so they take a break here, and we'll take a break along with it. So timeout called by the Wrights Panthers. Jasper leads 21-14 here on 18 WGATS. All right, so the Wildcats with the first gamble of the football game. Big gamble here on fourth and one from the 28-yard line. Grant Young, the quarterback. Well, they're stacking the middle. Young's going to keep it. And he gets plenty of yardage as he gets across the 30 all the way to the 33-yard line. I think a lot of people just probably keyed on number 23, but Young with an outstanding run there, Bob. Well, that's exactly what Wrights did. Yeah, you've seen all the, the blue shirts in the middle. And I tell you what, fourth and short on your side of the 30, you got a sophomore quarterback in, and Coach Lewis makes that call. Well, that's a lot of confidence, and then, well, like I'm we said, I'm here to tell you. And Grant Young, just five foot eight, 148 pounds, he does the job there. And now you give it to Dawkins, and Dawkins continues on on the left side there as he gets across the 40 yard line to the about the uh, right out there at the 41. There was a play earlier in in the first half where Man went up the middle, and you made a comment about Dawkins coming a little bit further out, you know, towards the tackles instead of right up the middle. And I've noticed that at that point when you said that, and I start paying particular attention, they are running him wide right now because they're shooting everybody up towards the center. Right. So now Young with the football, and he's going to run the option. And he's got running room to the outside. He's going to get that first down. And I'll tell you what, that young quarterback's showing a lot of confidence. We saw it late last week in the Harrison game. And, uh, again, I know it was kind of mop-up time, but uh, he took advantage of it and had some outstanding runs and some really good drives, and he's doing a great job filling in for Man right now, who I understand is cramping up right now. Right, Bob? Yeah, that's. Uh, I went over to the Jasper coaching staff, and they were nice enough to pass along that information. But we also seen some rights of Panthers down here with their toes pointed down. So cramps evidently is happening on both sides. All right, so we have finished three quarters of play. Neither team was able to put anything on the board in that third quarter. But Jasper leads after three, 21 to 14 over the Wrights Panthers here on 18 WJTS. All right, so we come into the fourth quarter. Jasper up 21 to 14 with the football. First and 10, the young quarterback, Grant Young, filling in for Blake Manus, being treated on the sideline over there for some cramps. But Young doing the job so far. And this time they give it to the fullback. It's Dawkins and nothing really there. So he is just stuffed. Well, he got, he, got, he got hit pretty good underneath the numbers to kind of stand him up. And then Wright's per, pursuit was, was extremely uh, uh, efficient when they came in. You know, you're talking about Grant Young and, and how well he did towards the end of the Harrison game. Of course, they had their still their number one defensive line in. People would say when he came in, well, you got Dawkins back there. Just lean on Dawkins. That's that's not the mindset out there. Right. 
The Cats have yet to complete a pass tonight, though, with the passing game. So now they're going to run the option, and quickly he pitches out to Berger. Berger's going to have to show some speed, but there's nothing there as he is just met in the backfield. And what a play defensively there. I'm trying to see the number. I think it was number, was that five, L.J. Oxley? Well, took a great pursuit line. I, I wish Berger would have tried to trust his, his speed a little bit more. Kind of looked like that was his only option. But he is strong, and if the guy overran him a little bit, he would have been able to shuffle him on by. But right now, you just want to be safe. You don't want to make your mistake. I would fancy to say that this would be a Dawkins up the middle, but we'll just have to see how the coaching staff looks at it. Let's so actually check that. That was Ty Burns, number seven, making that stop. So a big play by the defensive back to come up, and now they give it. No, actually, the quarterback's going to have to keep it himself because Day was quickly out there. Now the ball gets popped out. And Wrights recovers. So the Wildcats with their first turnover of the night. So a nice drive that was moving along with Grant Young. But again, the young quarterback in that situation, I don't know if it was a misread on his part or what, but he was kind of left all to himself to make the play there. And the ball gets knocked from behind. And Wrights will have it right back with momentum on their side. First and 10 at the 50, just inside the 50 at the 49. Well, it... it you know, you, you've got the inexperience. Now, we've seen him out there do some plays, and he looks like, a, you know, the little brother of man when, when the way he operates out there. But that right there was one that man would have probably kept in Dawkins' belly. But with, with the sophomore coming in, he, he's, he's still getting high grades. All right, so can Wrights take advantage of the turnover? The Cats picked off a pass earlier, and now here's a flag. But usually in the spot of holding here, unless it's a face mask on the run. Well, I sure didn't see his uh, helmet dip down. Personal foul face mask, so that is the call. So he threw it right away, so obviously it was at least obvious to the, the back judge there. And so that's going to be 15 yards, and that will move the football all the way to the... Oh, I guess they, from the spot of the foul at the 47, so that's going to move it to the 32. So Wright's in great position here. Yeah, they, it helps when you get aided by a 15-yard penalty to move that down. But Jasper's shown the ability to kind of shut that down. Now, they've been going to the run quite a bit. Just Jasper better keep their eyes open. Every single play, play that ball in the, in the deep corner and those little screens underneath. The good thing is I think Mann's back out there in his safety spot. So now Bricky's getting a lot of pressure, but now he rolls to his right, and he just chucks it out there, and it will go incomplete. So nice nifty move there to get away from the rush by the quarterback. Yeah, he did He did the, what the senior would do. You know, you, it got to the point to where he's seen it was not developing. Uh, our defensive backs are doing a good job of being better engaged, um, not, not, not really biting on, on the hard fakes. But he did what you do, you know, live to fight another day. And, and that was a great read by the senior. I'm keeping an eye on number five out there for the Wildcats. Man, he's playing a free safety spot. He's out there for defense, but he is really trying to stretch that calf there. So second down and 10. Chuck out a quick screen out here and hooks up with Joy there. And that's going to get the ball to the... 26-yard line, so a pickup of about six. Well, we're definitely looking at uh, two-down territory here. Um, unless they get a loss, uh, maybe a no gain, but still where it's located at at the 26, you're talking 36-yard field goal, which in the Harrison game, their kicker did send one. You know, he's at home, and he did send one a pretty good distance. So uh, I, I would say any gain at all here, uh, if they do not get the first down, would be a four-down territory. So third down here, third and about five. Screen. Trying to set up the screen. The Cats can get to him, and they will. What a defensive play there by Beekler, number 24, coming up from his defensive end spot, Michael Beekler. You know, when Beekler came up, the one thing he didn't let him do was bounce to either side. He kept him in the middle. If he step, stepped to this side, Beekler came to this side, stayed under control. And then at the since he was going backwards, people are saying, well, why didn't you throw it away? Well, he wasn't outside the tackle box. So, you know, that's an intentional grounding. That's a penalty and loss of down. And that's a 20-yard loss on that play. It moves it all the way to the 46, forcing rights to punt, and it's a low punt, potentially returnable. 
And it is picked up right there at the 10. Nice move there by Day. Now he's got some open to the left side. And he oh, gets knocked out of bounds and no penalty flag. Oh wow. my lord, he was a yard and a half out of bounds. At least. And man, oh man, in any other game you see that call. Day just took an absolute pop. He was at least two steps out of bounds there. Wow. And the, and the side judge was right on top of it. And that's why you hear people say, yeah, you're from Jasper. You're, you're making excuses. That's what you get when you come down to rights. Not, right. not from the rights team, but you see that those calls go against Jasper. All right. So anyway, man is back out there to engineer this drive starting at the 41-yard line. Nice punt return. By day, returns at 31 yards there. Now they give it to Dawkins, and Cats just need a nice, long, sustained drive here with 8.22 on the clock here, and the clock running. Jasper with a seven-point lead and the football in their hands. Absolutely. Just, just keep bleeding it. Uh, get in there. Uh, coaching staff did a great job of bringing Young in and saying, you know, where we're positioned at the field with the score, what the score is, the way our defense is playing in the second half as far as not giving up the big yards. We're going to ride Young for a, a, a series, and now they got Man back in there. Brilliant move. Keep him out, get him fluid, stretch him out. So the Wildcat defense doing their job here in this second half. Berger comes in motion. Now Man's going to run it, keeps the football, and he needs to get across the 50 to the 49 for the first down. He gets close to the 50, so he's going to be about a yard shy on his third down. Well, as a Jasper fan, uh, you think the black and gold sitting in good position when you got the hammer like Dawkins up there. But when you got third and short and you know you're going to go for it on fourth, who knows? But the one thing that I did notice with man and anybody that's had cramps will understand this, not the explosiveness when, you know, getting that around that corner. But so he just took what they, they gave him and now we got a third and short. All right, so third and short and the clock ticking, play clock down to six seconds. So he's going to have to get this off. Snap, and they give it to Dawkins. He's got a lot of room to the right side. He's going to go along the sideline and rush it all the way to, we'll see if they spot that. I actually say he goes out of bounds at the 25. You know, Craig, you called it perfectly, how they were taking Dawkins and moving him out towards, you know, going out to the side. Now, he doesn't have the breakaway speed that man does, but good Lord, you get that locomotive running. I mean, I'm glad I'm not down there seeing that big old number come towards me. So a huge 26 yard trot on the right side there. Stops the clock at 6.53 but most importantly the Wildcats with the football getting deeper into Wright's territory. Now Dawkins again. They just cannot stop it over there. And well, so Dawkins with another pickup of five or so. Exactly right. Um, all math people will tell you 10 yards, four downs Okay, a little over three yards each time. Uh, and, and that's what they're getting with Dawkins right now. And I think I would, unless they're going to just try a little curl, you know, with man running to the outside, with him being hobbled a little bit, you know, you want this game. It is conference season. But you've got future down there, so they may try to ride Dawkins. Well, and the other thing, too, is that the Wildcats are just trying to milk that clock as much as they can, get it down inside of five seconds when they snap the football here. And quarterback man keeps it, and they're trying to steal that football away from him. But, boy, he just continues to battle. And, boy, something that was, again, the, he's, he's hitting, a, you know, he's basically hitting right at the line of scrimmage, but then was able to just kind of scoot his way, and next thing you know, he's 11 yards downfield. Well, to carry on with what you said about them bringing Dawkins and moving him, you know, his lane outside to tackle. Now the slants of the defense are not coming towards the center. They're going towards the defensive end. And that's the second time tonight that man planted his foot and went right up the middle like a quarterback sneak and was very successful. Right. Doing it. So the Wrights Panthers just not able to stop the Wildcat offense and it's all on the ground. No passing yards tonight. All of it's coming on the ground. So this time Dawkins gets it to the left side and he is popped right there. So another nice hit there by Ty Burns, but he's able to pick up. That was actually a first and goal situation there. So he gains maybe a yard or two. Let's see if they spot it at the nine or the eight. It was first and goal from the 10, it's actually at the nine. Well, the, probably the hardest hit Dawkins has taken all year. I mean, 
Burns did a nice job of coming up and, and standing him up. But the one thing that the coaches, you know, late in this game, eating the clock, Wrights has used some timeouts, that they're just pleading with the Jasper players, let's don't put it on the ground. Now, I am knocking on wood saying that. All right, so actually the officials whistle for a timeout, so it looks Wright's like player is going to have to come off here with this helmet there. Looks like man's going to have the whole 25 play clock. Number 73, Jackson Brown takes that player's spot there. So actually, we'll, we'll start the play clock at 25. So it's now running. And actually, the game clock running as well. 446 on the clock. Jasper's inside the 10 here. The other if thing, they can score here, this is going to be huge to kind of take control of this football game. You're absolutely right, Craig. But the other thing that you want to consider if you don't get much on here is keeping the ball in the middle of the field for the field goal. So man running that clock down. No field and he goal. pitches it out. That's Berger. He's got an opening. If he can get across, and he does. Berger takes it in. Nine yards on the pitch out for the touchdown. So Jasper now with a two-score lead, 27-14. to 14. With all the athletic ability that Mr. Young has when he came in when man was over on the side, there's no substitution for experience. Right. The, I mean, that was the best read as far as the option goes between Berger and Mann all year. We've seen in a couple of games where Berger was not in the correct position. He sure in the heck was there when he caught it. He knew what to do with it. Right. All right, so Summersheim out there to kick the extra point. Good snap, good hold, and a good pop through the goal post. So... Jasper did just what they needed to do there. The defense doing the job here in the second half. Force rights into the punt on their last possession, especially after that face mask, but an unbelievable 20-yard sack by Michael Beekler gives the Wildcats the football back. Day with a 31-yard punt return to set up. The Wildcats in really good field position and finished off with a nine-yard touchdown run by Berger. So we're going to take a break, 28-14 with 4.26 to go here in the fourth quarter on 18 WJTS. Four minutes, 26 seconds to go here in the fourth quarter. The Jasper Wildcats with a two-touchdown lead, 28-14 as Sermersheim approaches to kick off. And a little squib kick this time, fielded nicely at the 30, so... Oh, balls the ball's on the foot field, and the Jasper Wildcats come up with it. What a play. Now they're starting to. A little nope. Okay, I was going to say there was a discussion over. No, they're seeing it's Wright's football. What are you. Oh, goodness. I was like, come on. <laughs> no, maybe they pointed the wrong way. Oh, yes, he did. He did. He realized it. <laughs> oh, my God. I was like, no, come on. Now, now we got a, a penalty. Probably warning against the coaching staff over we here. We got a penalty over here, so, yeah. We'll see what the call is. Well, Coach Brunson's yeah, had he's his picking it up. So, yeah, I think it is a sideline warning, I guess. Oh, but that was. Man, what a play. I'll tell you what, because it was fielded cleanly right there at the 30 yard line. It looks like they were going to have great field position right around the 40 there. But then the ball popped out. Well, when, when sideline you, warning against rights. Well, Brunson is frustrated, right, mm -hmm. when he's at Mount Vernon. He did a good job, but Jasper always handled him. Yeah. You know, now it's happening in his first year here. But No, they are. Unsportsmanlike conduct is what they're calling. So, yes, they are walking it. That's an extra 15 yards for the Wildcats. So the Cats not only come up with a big turnover on the kickoff, now have unbelievable field position, control of this football game, two touchdown lead, 4.18 to go, and we're going to start at the 25. Well, he didn't get a warning, so he probably said something he shouldn't have. Right. Or somebody did, at least. All right, so Mann gives it to Dawkins. So Dawkins just to the right side, only gain of about a yard, but right now it's just a matter of keeping the ball in your hand, milk that clock down, two timeouts left for rights. Well, Jasper's game plan and game thinking has not changed. But they are, all, they are putting more emphasis on ball control. I, I mean, ball safety, you know. The one thing that can get rights right back into this is a silly, silly turnover. So protect the ball. Again, the clock just milking down. 341 on the game clock, play clock down to seven. And now they run a counter to the left side, and that's, that's Dave. Nice Look move. at that move. But now a penalty flag comes out, and 
Day took it in for the score. So a 24-yard run there for Day, but it's going to come back. A holding on the Wildcats at the 20-yard line. Well, I, you know, as much as I've bitten on the, on the Zebras for missing Day's late hit out here and, and some of the other things, he was correct, but that was one of those that we just absolutely go crazy on, and the coaching staff especially goes crazy on because it was behind the play. Right. Unbelievable move. I mean, it, it is evident right now Jasper's got rights on their heels. Oh, no doubt about it. I mean, again, an outstanding call there. But so the penalty really doesn't hurt us. Right. Because we're more concerned about the clock than we are yards. And the clock should. No, actually, they'll. There they go. Okay, so the game clock is run. Nope. It is. Okay, okay, so 322 on the clock. Well, they, clock running down. They planted the ball, but he didn't He didn't whistle it right away. So he's taking it down to the eight-second mark before he hands it off there, and that's Go Berger. right back to it. Look at that. Berger making some moves. Man, had a nice touchdown run on the last score for the Wildcats, and right there, Cats were knocked back on the holding call. Well, now you got coaches that are from Central and Castle and North and, and all that. They're going to be looking at this, and they're going to watch towards the end of the game. They're going to go, oh, great, now we got Berger, you know, because of, of how Mann and Dawkins and Day have, have been doing. So it's good to see that. And, and back in my day, his uncle Mike Berger, you kind of seen him make some moves like that. So. Oh, no doubt. All right, so 11-yard run there. Cats with a third and four, but the clock continues to tick. Two timeouts left for Wrights. They trail 28 to 14. Pitch out. Is that Berger or Day? I think it's Day. 31. All right, so Day actually with a great run on that pitch out. And he takes it all the way inside the five. So the Cats looking to put another score on the board here to definitely put this football game away. Well, Wrights is throwing up the, the white flag right now. You know, you, you get your defense. It is so difficult to engage in your blockers and then try to try to, try to make the read. But all night they've had to get slammed by Dawkins and then they've seen the speed of day. And now they, you know, with days, you know, cramping up, coaching staff's really kind of taking him out of danger. And the other guys are stepping up. All right, so the 21-yard run sets up the Wildcats here, and they give it to Dawkins, and can he finish it off? I think they want to get Play him continues in on, and Jasper's calling a touchdown, and the side judge does as well. So Dawkins just hammers his way the last four yards, and the Jasper Wildcats now up 34-14, to 14, 206 to go in this football game, and just pretty well offensively and defensively took over this football game in the second half. Absolutely. They, Jasper straightened up what they needed to do. Their coaching staff made the op, uh, the changes better than what the Wrights did. And Coach Shelton, when he brought up those defensive backs, if you watch the, the first half and the second half where they're positioned, I mean, what a great adjustment by Coach Shelton. All right, so Sermersheim stays perfect on the night and on the season. So he pops through the extra point and Jasper just takes over, leads this football game, 34-14 with 2.06 to go here in the ball game down here at the Wrights Bowl here on 18 WJTS. So the Jasper Wildcats making the plays tonight here in the, especially here in the second half, they led at halftime 21 to 14, but then just interception, a fumble recovery on a kickoff and two huge sacks here in the second half. So Cats just being the more physical team and of course, physical on offense too with the power running game all night tonight. No pass completions, but all the yardage coming on the ground. So they try the same thing and- I kind of figured. Oh, now Wright's having a tough time really fielding and it goes all the way down to the 12 yard line. Now there's no chance. They wanted the ball to get into Jonas Burnett's hands. He had a 60 yard kickoff return earlier. So, well, we had talked about Jasper and, and them hitting the opponents this year, the, the physicality that they're showing. When he was down there, he was looking up because he's been popped a few times tonight. And, right. and you get your teeth rattled, you know, you start hearing footsteps. 
No, and Jasper did a great job of, even though that was bobbled, staying in their lanes and taking all options away. Right. All right, so Bricky, who had a phenomenal first half, has completely been held in check here in the second half and can't complete that pass out here. So again, just taking a look at what happened here in this second half. Wright started off with a 60-yard kickoff return. So gave him the football at the 21-yard line. A couple plays later, though, Blake Mann picks off a pass in the end zone on a tip ball. And then the next possession, Wright's forced a punt after a sack by the Wildcats. And then actually had great field position after a Wildcat fumble. And a sack by Michael Beekler forced a punt. They had a 31-yard punt return that helped set up eventually the 21-yard, I'm sorry, the nine-yard run by Berger, number 21. And then the Cats on a fumble recovery on the kickoff, finished off with another touchdown for the Wildcats, and that one came by number 23, Lance Dawkins. So here they are, 35 to 14. I mean, I, I, again, I know we don't have the fans like we normally do here at, at the Wrights Bowl, so... But, you know, so I think in situations like this, it just comes down to who's the better football team. And obviously the Wildcats showed that here tonight. Well, it, one thing that I've noticed through rights is Smith's not in the backfield anymore. They, they've got Burns back there. Ricky rolling to his left, but he's a right-handed quarterback. Now he throws it deep, and he's got a man if he can get it to him, but he cannot, so he throws it short. But great pressure by the Wildcats to force him out of the pocket there. Well, the, the one that he had deep when – is there a flag out there? Yeah. So it must have been a late hit on the quarterback. So the ball, the flag is actually right there at the eight-yard line. Well, it's all kind of mood at this point, unless it's a hold. We'll let's see if they take their punt team out there. Looks like they're changing a lot of personnel. Yep, they got their punt team out there. Awesome, awesome job. Uh, front four uh, for Jasper. Have, uh, have been getting more pressure on him. He's had a lot more happy feet. Um, the other thing that's happening is when he, when he would get back and he'd plant his foot and he'd hit those guys coming out, now that the Jasper defensive backs have come up, he turns around, he sees white jerseys out there, and the ball doesn't come out as fast. Right. All right, so Wrights decides to punt here. and Just let it go. They just let it fly, you're right. And it will stop right there at the 42-yard line. So Wrights has two timeouts. I doubt they'll use them here. So Jasper will have a chance to just kind of run things out. And they actually bring Grant Young out here to kind of finish this up. Good move. So what a night tonight for the Jasper Wildcats. Offensively, struggled a little bit defensively, obviously against the pass in that first half where Wrights was able to pass for 172 yards. Reed Bricky was 14 of 17 in the first half, but... Totally different story here in the second half as the Wildcat defense was making plays against the quarterback with sacks and interceptions. Well, Coach Lewis has been uh, making a comment about the condition of the Jaspers players since the Memorial game. And you really, really see that when you start getting late in a game that's a head knocker. And Jasper has just stayed up and Wrights has, has wavered. All right, so Jasper's just going to run it out. Wrights is going to let us do it. So we got 46 on the game clock, so there's a differential of about nine seconds or so. So it's going to take one more snap once we get inside that 40-second mark, and we're at 34, so we can take a snap here, and we will finish this football game. But the Jasper Wildcats, again, new members of the Southern Indiana Athletic Conference and a lot of people were wondering, can Jasper compete in this conference? And absolutely we can. We are 3-0 and right now, Bob. Well, the big thing was um, when we beat Memorial, everybody was, you know, a little puffy chest because Memorial's number one in the state. And then we seen what Evansville North did to them a little bit later. Well, Wrights dropped 56 on Harrison. We put 50 on Harrison. So a lot of people in our, in our neck of the woods were saying, okay, we know our history with Wrights. Let's go down there and get a W. I don't think anybody that came down from Dubois County would have expected this type of score. Right. And what you had said at the beginning, uh, midway through the third quarter, was Jasper's adjustments were better than Wright's right. adjustments. Because, I mean, obviously Jasper had to do something against the pass. I mean, you give up 
basically a wide open field that Bricky was working with in that first half. I mean, you, you, you got to get after the quarterback. You got to make some plays, and there's no doubt they did. But when they got the football back in their hands, Jasper just continued on with what they are doing all night, and that's running the football and ball control and finishing drives with scores. The one thing that really stands out to me in that second half was not only, I mean, the defense, you know, all the obvious things, but for a coaching staff to have a sophomore come into the game, you're on the bad side of the 30-yard line, and you run him on fourth and one. Oh, fourth and one from the 28. You yeah. know, it, yeah, the percentages are high. The defense are, are keying on Dawkins. But still, you've got everybody crashing. Because Jasper, as you have showed in, as talked about in the stats through the whole game, did not put the ball in the air. Right. So Jasper was one-dimensional, and they said, it's okay that we're one-dimensional. We're better than you guys. Right. You know, this is what we're doing. Stop us if you can. And if you can't, well, you know, 35-14. Well, and the thing is, you kind of look at this, and it's like, okay, Jasper's going to do what they do best, and that's obviously run the football with combination of the triple option of what they've been able to do tonight. I mean, it, it worked with running Dawkins. It worked with man keeping the football. It worked whenever they ran, you know, the, the pitch out on the option there. So, I mean, it's just everything that Jasper wanted to do tonight worked to a T, especially offensively. Defensively, you know, again, you just have to make those adjustments in halftime. We did an outstanding job of doing that, and look at the result on the scoreboard. Well, you've said it all. Every part of the game was right there, so awesome job. So the, the big thing about it, though, was this game was extremely huge to Wrights because if you look at their schedule, they got Jasper, now they got North, now they got Central, then they got Castle. So with all that going on, you look over at Jasper, and this was a huge game because now they got Bossy and Modern Day, which are good schools and, and good programs. But then after that, that's when Jasper runs into the Central Castle North, and then we got Vincent's Lincoln at home. Yeah, and I tell you what, um, yeah, just kind of taking a look at as far as what what's going to be coming up here for the Wildcats. I mean, you know, we're going back home for two weeks, you know, and that's the thing with Bossy at home. We'll see what happens there because actually uh, it was breaking news before the football game, but the uh, Castle Bossy game was actually was actually uh, canceled due to a positive test, COVID test. So, so that that game didn't happen. But we don't know if it's a Castle player or if it's a Bossy player. So we'll see if it has any effect on next week's game. But, but still, you know the Cats in a really good situation here, three and zero, and taking on a Bossy team that's struggled so far. Let's let's face it, what it what the situation is there. So a chance to go 4-0 in this conference is just phenomenal. Well, I don't know where, I tried to find it and, and got busy, but I don't know where rights if they cracked the top 10, but they were flirting around the top 10. Mm -hmm. um, oh yeah, I mean, I had the uh, polls right here. Jasper was number five in the media poll coming in. Wrights was 14th. And in the coaches poll, Jasper was eighth and Wrights was 17th, so. Well, the, the half dozen one, no, six the other exactly. way, so. But the, the big thing is, you talked about the two games. The, these next two games against Bossy, and we'll see how it plays out, and, and Modern Day, and Modern Day's got the legendary Mike Cable over there. I mean, the guy has been around forever, championships in wrestling and football. But then we're at Central, we're at Castle, mm -hmm. and we're at North. Yeah. All tough games, and three in a row. So, yeah, the, 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 the test is yet to come. There's no doubt when that comes up. But Would it not be ironic if the championship of the SIAC came down to the Vincennes-Lincoln game? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that would be ironic, yeah. So we'll see there. All right, but just got the uh, stats here. I actually had to run down Dave Messmer and appreciate him getting those stats to us every week whenever we uh, do the football games here. But Jasper obviously dominating on the field. Uh, with a run game, 58 carries for 395 yards, uh, just one passing attempt, that fell incomplete. So 395 yards on the ground for the Wildcats. And, um, you know, you looked at halftime and everything looked even. I mean, um, Wrights had 30 plays for 201 yards. Jasper had 27 plays for 204 yards. But it basically, the Wildcats double them up here 
Wrights ends up with 42 plays for just 192 yards. The passing game was just completely shut down. And again, that was great, great job by the Wildcat defense, both getting pressure on the quarterback and then also making a good play there right when Wrights was deep in the Wildcat territory and able to pick that pass off in the end zone. Well, I, Jasper's energy never changed. And when you get into a tight game, one, when you're talking to guys like us it's that's knows the game just a little bit, consumed a lot of football watching on TV you know, over our years, you start to watch body language. Right. And I could see right in the middle of the third quarter, it really started, you start seeing guys from rights with their, with their hands on their knees. Mm -hmm. You know, we had man out there. Young came in, did what he needed to do, but you also seen a lot of rights guys. And midway through that third quarter, when they just got, they couldn't stop it. I mean, it didn't matter if they guessed right. They still couldn't stop Dawkins. And they still couldn't stop, uh, you know, the option play out there. Right. You just start seeing their shoulders, you know, no patting on the helmets, guys yelling at each other. And as an opponent, when you see that and you hear those words from that team yelling at each other, you just smile from ear to ear because you right. know it's over. No doubt about it. So, um uh, Individual performances tonight, Lance Dawkins, 24 carries for 176 yards and a touchdown. Blake Mann, 19 carries for 147 yards and three touchdowns. Caleb Berger, nice night for him. And five carries for 36 yards and a touchdown. So still question whether that one option play might have been uh, the day, but again, seeing 31 versus 21 is hard to see. But Day had a great night tonight as well with a nice punt return, you know, there and then you know just again just what a night and then Grant Young coming in in relief I mean when when man was down with his cramps and everything and for Grant Young to come out here especially in that one situation where it was a fourth down fourth down and one from the 28 he gets that first down I know we end up losing the the ball on that drive but still you know again it, it was just huge for us to at least milk some clock here because you know on that drive we had um, like eight plays and, um, you know, and that was right there in that third quarter, and it was just huge for the Wildcats to keep that possession alive at that point. Well, it, I, I can just hear my friends here in the, in the next part of the week. Well, you know, Rice is down a little bit. I'll just tell them what we saw. We seen a dogfight in that first. I mean, right. They were going right back and forth at each yeah. other. But then, for lack of a better way of saying it, Jasper manned up. Right. They puffed their chest out. They were thumping out there, took out the receivers, took out – this quarterback, he had no idea what he was seeing in, in that. If they would have done that in the first half, and I know you got to make your adjustments, you got to see the game's long. This, it would have been what we talked about with the stats. Jasper would have allowed very, very few points. Not that 14's a lot. Right. Shut them out in the second half. But you know we were looking for that 10 mark because that's what they're averaging. So they were they were right there. But just overall impressed with the coaching staff all the way down to the sophomores. Right. No question about it. So the Wildcats, 3-0 on the season with a 34-14 win over the Wrights Panthers. And no matter what the record is, it's a conference record as well because we only play conference teams. So the Cats, 3-0 in the SIAC Conference here in their first year back since back in the late 70s when we were originally in the SIAC Conference. So big win for the Cats tonight. And next week we will be at home against the Evansville Bossy Bulldogs. And um, Wrights will actually be out on the road, just up the road, against the Evansville North Huskies. I, I just want to mention that um, my dad watches these telecasts and, and all that, but he's just got out of knee surgery. So he's right in the middle of rehab, doing real good. You know, he's running around my uh, brother, Joe, ragged. And, and they're getting all that. So... That it's one of his times to kind of sit down when these games come on. He'll he'll watch them a couple of times, oh, you know. So and and Jas Dad's always been a big Jasper sports fan. Oh, so yeah. he's doing well, and and I wish him luck, and and I hope everything goes well. Absolutely. Well, we hope for a speedy recovery for him. All right. So for Bob Welp and Jeremy Marcos on the on the video, my name is Craig Schneider. The Wildcats with a huge win, 35-14 over the Wrights Panthers here on 18 WJTS. Good night. This has been an 18WJTS presentation of Jasper Wildcat Football.